Hello all y'all Tercel junkies out there. I'm Matt. This is my Tercel and I wanted to show uh, all y'all the uh, couple secrets and tricks I found out messing with the Tercels. This is my fourth one, latest and greatest. She's uh, got quite a few little mods on here. I'll probably uh, do another video one of these days about the, some of the other mods I've done on this little beast but for today I want to show you guys a couple little sick uh, a couple little tricks and secrets um, I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos on the Tercels seeing if there's anything I might have missed any kind of tricks or tips and didn't really find a lot In fact what I found was I need to make a video and show you guys what I know because I've been messing with these for a very long time and I have had quite a few of them and worked on quite a few of them so basically what I want to show today um, involves the carburetor and a few basic things to make these little cars run right um, the Weber carburetor it's a great great way to go but uh, I think Toyota uh, has a certain way of doing things and making everything work right that you could possibly figure out with a Weber but you know I'm getting about 32 miles a gallon in this one and she runs pretty good so uh, basically here's what I want to show you guys is there's a uh, couple of solenoids on these that open the uh, the uh, gas jets the, the, the main the main gas uh, your primary and your your second uh, uh, solenoids for the for the gas. Uh, a lot of people show the first one on here, which is right here, and that would be your your main one. Uh, that that controls the idle. If that's not if that's not plugged in and working, um, your car won't run. <laughs> uh, also, it. Uh, you know it uh, opens the main jet for the power for the first uh, for the first primary jet so inside you have your second jet and that's basically the other side if you look at the bottom you've got the two holes of course the bigger one is your secondary and that's where your power is going to come from when you hit the gas pedal past about halfway depending on where it's set so to, to, to check this, what you want to do is take this one out here, which is your secondary one. This is where I didn't get any, any ideas on YouTube before, and I'm trying to show you guys now. So these things, what they do is they get stuck. And when they get stuck, it's usually because they've been sitting a long time, the gas it turns to a varnish. Um, and the way to fix that is to take it and tap on it down here on something like something metal really and you can hear it kind of jiggle on this one I don't know if you can hear that that means it's probably a good one um, if you run this one wire to a power wire and it's a white wire with a black some of them are gonna vary be a little different you might have a two wire one the two wire ones you're gonna want to run uh, one to a power one to a ground but since this only has one wire you're gonna run that to a power and when you touch this to metal, metal to metal, you're going to actually get a ground which should make it click. And if it's clicking, then that thing's working great. You don't have to worry about it. Um, if it's not clicking, you want to spray it out with some uh, carburetor cleaner, clean out those little holes. Uh, I recommend some BG Enforce spray or some kind of a pen hardcore penetrating oil. Uh, let it soak in there, maybe a couple hours. Try tapping on it again. Sometimes you got to give them a good a good dump to get them to get going, but once they come free they come free and uh, you Usually don't have a problem with that most most of the time. I've found that these things Will work again like brand new um, You might have to do it a couple of times over a year or two But they do get working again. Good luck trying to find a new one. I've searched and searched and searched uh, best bets at junkyard if uh, if you can't get yours to work so once that's fixed uh, once you once you know that's working if it worked off the bat great um, so I don't know if you can see with a little hole there where it goes in 
Um, inside there is passageways to the inside of your carburetor to the, the second jet in there. Now I'm sure you guys know how to take out your jets. Um, if you don't, I guess I don't know if I can see in there with this or not. But down inside in there, yeah, there's one. So basically you have this guy right here which is, you know, if you push down on that little guy, it's a little spring dealy. That's uh, part of your power valve there. Now, that also runs to that second jet I was just showing you with the solenoid. Um, you want to take that out. You want to clean that. You want to clean that out and make sure that's working functionally. Sometimes you can, when you have them out, you can blow air through them. And when you hit the little spring thing there, which is this guy, and you push it, you push it down, and you push that down, you can blow air through it. And then when you let it out, you can't. And if that if that's the case, then it's working right. Um, and you want to basically spray that out with carb cleaner while it's out. Um, I recommend wearing some uh, safety goggles because it likes to spray back into your eyeballs and blind you temporarily. So. Check that out. Now the next thing I would recommend, if you're going to go through all that, this part right here, this also pushes down and have a little spring. Now these things get stuck. If your solenoid uh, was stuck, chances are this is stuck too. Uh, so is your power valve. Sometimes you can just replace them. They come with a carb kit. Uh, the little spring guy in there. You know, all this stuff usually comes with a carb kit. Um, but if you clean that out and get that spring in real good, this actually has gas go through it. Um, not sure exactly how all that works, but I know if you have it working right. You also want to take this thing out. There's a little screw right there. You can see a little Phillips head. And you pull this out, spray it all out, and make sure that you see carb cleaner come out the little holes. Um, so basically that's a couple couple simple things on there that you can uh, check to get that secondary power valve to open and close. And once you have that, you will feel uh, not a lot, but a little bit of power when you actually hit on the gas on these things. So the other thing I want to point out is on the very, very bottom, there's these two holes. Basically, right, right here, one, one, you know, one of them has just a regular screw and one of them has a hole. Now, if you take that one out, I usually have to use some kind of a, a power drill with the, uh, with the ratchet, you know, the torque, the torque power drill, flathead bit. Take that out, clean it all out in there, man. Those things get plugged up. That'll, that'll cause all this uh, secondary jet stuff to not work. A lot of people have that happen on these cars I've noticed so that's some basic pointers on the carburetor on that um, also you have uh, your secondary jet um, vacuum here that uh, I don't know if I can get the lighting right there we go so on the bottom there where that connects up to your uh, throttle linkage you can see that right here. Yeah, I can hear that. I don't know if you can hear it, but you can hear like a airy, pumpy sound, like it's still good on that. You wanna make sure those are good. Um, if you take these off, there's two little screws that hold it on right there. And if you take these things off, by those two little screws inside, right in here, there's a little tiny flat washer that goes in there. Um, not that it makes that big of a deal because it still seals up where it goes on around here um, Pretty good, but that little flash wa uh, flat washer allows vacuum to go inside here and open this and when that opens and this solenoid Clicks all of it works together with the power valves. I was showing you And if you get all that working right, which is really not as bad as it looks then you will have your secondary power power uh, jets working. Also, there's two jets inside here. There's one here, and you can't really see it too well, but there's another one. Right, right there. So you take those two jets out, and you clean that out while all this is out. 
you know, while you have the spring thing out and everything. Spray it all out, make sure uh, lines are clear. That will get that going for you and bring some power back to your Tercel. So on this one, it's working. I also wanted to point out a couple things. Um, basically, uh, the, the vacuum routing of this um, is basically, I found to be the best vacuum routing system. This is an 83. I know they're all a little bit different. Um, you want to check your, your wires that go to your distributor, the two vacuum wires here. If you have a timing light, you want to t basically, uh, sometimes they get reversed. You have, you have two wires, sometimes you have three. The third one's for uh, high altitude compensation. Um, I found that not to be a very great working setup. Uh, if it's all working right, it's not bad. Above 5,000 feet, it will advance your timing and uh, lean it out just a little bit. Uh, of course, high altitude, you want a little bit less. Um, less fuel. You want to run a little a little lean at higher altitudes. So what I've found is that when you're timing this vehicle you basically want to have it at uh, 13 degrees with those vacuum lines plugged in and if you the uh, if you plug the vacuum lines and you, you take them off right here like this and you plug plug it Plug it right there on the uh, carburetor side. Doesn't these ones to the distributor don't matter, but you want to plug it to the carburetor side. And uh, if you plug both those lines or all three of those lines, and you time it, you want it at about five degrees. Um, when you plug those in, it should be at 13. Now, if those wires get backwards and reversed, then your timing will actually show more like 30 degrees or, or, or 35 degrees when you want it at 13. Uh, sometimes you can just reverse those wires and you get your timing advanced to work right. A lot of times that happens. It's a mistake I've seen uh, a lot of people do. So one more thing I wanted to show, actually two more things, is those solenoids that I was showing earlier, um, right here, this guy here, uh, those those are activated now the, that's the other thing that could, could go wrong with those solenoids is they're electronically controlled but they're electronically controlled by a vacuum because this was uh, right on the verge of electronic and, and mechanical these cars uh, I believe what controls that is these two little switches here I don't know if you can see in there but there's vacuum lines going to the bottom of those right here well you can't really there we go, kind of, kind of see in there a little bit. Either way, there's two vacuum lines. They go right there. So here, the left one to the left and the right one to the right. That's how I found mine to work. Um, I don't know if y'all can see that or not. So those are actually to those little guys there. Um, those those uh, control the solenoid to work. So basically inside those, what they do is when vacuum hits them, it pulls a little thing down inside and it grounds it out, which grounds this wire, which tells the computer, oh, turn the solenoid on. You need more, you need more fuel. Um, so you want those hooked up. A lot of people unhook those, shove a, shove a screw down in them or something. I don't think that's the right way to go. If they're not working right, um, chances are you have your vacuum wires wrong or something inside the carburetor is not right. The next thing I want to show, this is my last and final thing I wanted to show, is this EBC, EBC V-Valve, I believe they call this. Now this is an interesting one right here, this guy. What this does is actually really cool. Um, it's got two vacuum lines to it. One of them goes right here. Now if you look inside the carburetor on the other one, this essentially goes into the carburetor and picks up fumes from vapors, fuel vapors. And all y'all that all y'all people out there that understand fuel vapors, they're actually more combustible than the gas itself in a liquid form. Um, basically, this allows gas to come in through the one line 
and go back down the other line. And I don't know if you can see it down in there, but it goes down in there to those. And it essentially inside of there is a little solenoid that opens and closes and allows that fuel vapor to go inside the engine and kind of gives you a little power boost. Uh, it's kind of an interesting thing. It also uh, helps with gas mileage because you're only burning fuel vapors. You're not, you're not burning actual liquid gas. So if you pull this little tab back and you lift this up, there's a little tiny Allen wrench right here will fit in that. I forget exactly what size. You'll have to figure it out. Sometimes they get locked up, corroded. But what I like to do is stick an Allen wrench in there and back it off about a turn. Um, what that does is allows the solenoid to open up just a little bit more and give you, I don't know if it really does a lot for the power, but it, it does a little bit, maybe. It might give you a horsepower or two. Um, so I'd, I like to do that. It's another little trick I learned. Um, as far as everything else goes, I just like to have everything hooked up the way it's supposed to be. And these cars will give you some great gas mileage and performance. Um, they're still slow. <laughs> but they will run a lot better if everything's the way it's supposed to be. Um, I did run an air intake on here. It's kind of hard to see because I, I got a little cover, but there's a cone underneath there. One of those K and N cones or whatever. It's kind of a little cover I built right here. Underneath that's a cone, cone air filter. And it just kind of gives it a little bit more power. So um I'm trying to think of anything else that might help you all out while I'm in this carburetor video. <laughs> There's a lot to these things, they're very complex. And long as everything else is set right these little carburetors actually do pretty good I guess there is another another uh, another one on your uh, emissions gizmo back here <laughs> and I've I've had to hardwire in one from another car it's actually part of the emissions control uh, the canister there some kind of canister it's got a little thing on it that if it's not working you know, it's supposed to click on and off it's another thing you can check out you know run the power wires to uh, one to one to power one to ground and make sure it's turned on on and off and if it is then uh, you're all good there's a couple other uh, sites I found that showed a little more information on how to uh, check all that it's also in the, the manual if you have a repair manual so that's my video. Hope it helped you all out. And give me a like or whatnot. And uh, if it helped you out, I just like to see that uh, people are running their little Tercels still. <laughs>